Okay, let's go over creating a book from scratch and then um, putting it in our classroom, sharing it and taking a look at it on reader. Okay, sounds good. Let's go. Let's create a book. Let's see. Uh, Sizzling Summer. Uh, example of how to make a book. I'm going to pick a color. Now notice that um, it shows up immediately in Writer. Um, that's where we're working in, of course, in Writer. And I can change the title at any time and I can delete it, of course, if I want. Uh, but let's go into Edit Book. And in Edit Book, this is the default image right now. We have to create a page so that it shows a cover page. I'm going to call this page number one, cover page. Now the title that shows up here is going to show up in your um, in your uh, table of contents automatically. And I'm going to use editor. And I'll talk about the upload PDF file some uh, at another time. Uh, notice you can also create a page such as a teacher guide so that uh, it won't be visible to students, but if you share uh, your book with other teachers, you'll be able to give them uh, some added pages, um, possibly some advice on how to use uh, whatever you put in there for the students. Okay, so we're gonna go use editor, it's the default, and create. Now in editor, this is the view of editor, we have widgets on the left-hand side, and we have page settings. Now, for the cover page, I like to use a background. And so if I click on page settings, background style image, and I click add image, it will include background images. Uh, we have a, a gallery of background images here already put into your uh, account. And we can pick any one of these assortment of covers. And I don't know, let's say, let's pick uh, this one. Um, I like this one actually. Insert. Now that's your cover and your back, the background of it. So now since it's the background, you can bring in a header at the top. And notice I just drag, drag the widget, put it over here. And when I click on it, it will give me controls. So I can say that. Uh, uh, summer project. If I want to change the size of it, I can up to say 50. I can center it, of course, and I can continue adding other elements in here. If I wanted to add a video, um, I can add a video by dragging that over here and it'll come up with um, the option to bring in a, a mp4 uh, file if I have one already. If I wanted to bring in a YouTube video, I just grab the YouTube widget and then I click that there. And uh, let's see, I'm going to say YouTube. I'm going to search for that over here and uh, um, Forces lesson, and I have a video I would like to put in. We'll grab this run, hyperlink, and now I just throw in the hyperlink here and insert. It'll automatically have that video on the on the page. Now I can do a lot of other things. I can bring in an audio file. I can bring in a learning object. Um, if you get, uh, if you sign up to become an advocate for Nadma, you will automatically uh, have learning objects to choose from, like this. These are professionally created uh, animations, virtual experiments, uh, little demonstrations, and you can preview. You can search through them up here by title, description. Uh, we have NGSS um, descriptions in there. 
and you can let's say if since it's forces was the video that I grabbed let me grab that oh there's effects of magnetic forces I can preview it by clicking it here and then it will actually load it up and allow me to preview uh, what it looks like and I can actually play it here and see, see if it's, it has everything I want it to have. If it does, then I just have it clicked and I insert it. And now I have a professional uh, professional animation interactive uh, element that's thrown into, into my book. And, uh, and I can then update the page, click on update down here in the lower left. Update the page saves the page. And so then once that is updated, it saves the page and I can create another page. Now I could actually just click on um, uh, on here where I say add new page and it'll automatically um, add a new page. I'm gonna say page two and uh, let's say, um, Home experiments and using editor again I'll create that and now I have another blank slate if I wanted to use a different background image I can use a different background image it doesn't matter if I wanted to replicate that previous background image I can um, let's say uh, let's say this one here insert now i have that background image and the other widget that's very useful is a is the quiz widget which um i can then enter it i use a quiz widget actually to do home experiments so home experiment and i show it one by one um this experiment you will need uh, um, spoon and a um, sheet of paper. A new question. Uh, Create a paper plane. Let's say the first one, and um, record a video. Uh, showcasing its design and how it works. And I can allow the file upload, and I'll allow the students to actually upload a. Any, any kind of file, photo, video, uh, whatnot, and say save. Now if I insert the quiz, that's how it'll appear on, on the page. Uh, I can put in columns, uh, two columns. So if I click on here, now the column on the right-hand side, the properties of columns, I can have two, three, four, as many as I want. I'll use two. I'll use a, a background, uh, the color, don't, let's see, I'll use white for that one. If I click over here, that'll be that one for the second one, white. Uh, but let's make it a different color slightly so you can see the two columns here. And if I wanted to put borders on, I can also put borders in here uh, for both of them. Just have to click on it and do it. Now, why do I do two columns here? Well, the nice thing is now I can drop in text into that area. If I click on that, this is example of text within a column. And then the other thing I can do is I can drop in an image on the other side. And I can drop in an image here, insert. Now it has that image inside of it. Now, the lovely thing about images, once you put an image on the page, you click on that image. It gives you controls, of course, for the image itself, left, center, right, 
full width or image pop. But then the hyperlink, that's the key. Click on that and now I can have that hyperlink in an external window. So a new window will come in or a pop-up depending on what kind of URL you put in there. Now in this case, I can use the same URL, the link that I used for that video on the other page and put it in there. So now if a student ends up uh, clicking on this image, it will pop up with that video that I had hyperlinked. Now the other interesting thing about hyperlinks in here is that I can edit that, but I can choose it. Um, actually, I can, uh, let, let's, let's unlink it for now and then choose an internal link. And if I internal link, that means if they click on that image, they can go to, they can jump to a different page that I've uh, created for the, in the book. So you can imagine the assortment of ways you can have them, uh, the student go around through the book and the materials that you share. And I'll just update that, save it. Um, there's also a option here that I really like for design wise, it's a block. So if I scroll over here, or I grab the block widget, I bring it up here. Now I have a nice block and that individual block could um, could have a different um, I can have a different image here. I'm gonna add image background. That's background style. Sorry, I I played with that background. Insert. I'm gonna click on this for the block setting. That's right, block setting. I can do a different image here for the block setting. And let's just make it uh, this one. Insert. Now that's the block image. But what can I do in the block image? I can bring in an image into it. I can bring in a video into it. I can bring in an audio clip. Or I can even uh, bring in a text or a header into this block. So whatever, whatever you wish to create with all these widgets. We can imagine the assortment of things that you can create, the experiences that you can create for students um, that are that are within this uh, system are endless. And then I can exit the editor and publish the book. And in this case, um, I can check the text and continue and this will publish the book. It's gonna say publishing on the label here. And then once it trains that label to published, your book will be published. And if you wanted to update the book, uh, add more pages, change pages, edit them, you just go back and publish the book again. And once it shows published as it does now, that means it will be available in your shareable resources for classroom. So now it's right here, says on summer, and it's in a shareable resource. Now all I have to do is go to my class. Now I'll go to Kyle's class and I will assign the book. So any student that has that book or has that is in that class will automatically get that book. And if I click on this, I can take a look at that book. Um, no content for this book yet because there's no student in this classroom. But if there is a student, you'll be able to follow book usage and book activity. And let me show you what that looks like in this case, where I do have students using the book. I click on the book. Look at this. I can track how many seconds each student has looked at each page, even the average per page in the book, and also book activity. So with the quiz widget, when you have that, you can click on, you'll, you'll, you'll receive submissions from the students, answers, and also any files that you allow them to uh, send in. And in this case, you have, um, you have a video file, which was sent to, to you. And you can also give a remark uh, right down 
Look at now do the next experiment. And it today. And the student will receive that message right in that page, right where they did the submission. So everything is all uh, all contained in there for, the, for them and for you. And you can take a look at the book that we just made in Reader. Here it is in my personal library. I'll open it up. And this is the book. You have um, the summer project, uh, the video, the link. I press play, it'll start playing it. Um, and you have the you have the professional professionally created uh, uh, learning object that's already there. You can and that has options of shutting off the music, expanding it, or playing and pausing it. And you can go to the next page as the user, and you can see that the home experiment shows up here, and they would end up starting it, and they. Get a chance to put in text and attach a file. And they can attach any file they want from their computer and then submit it to you. And so if I clicked on this, remember what this was? It's a hyperlinked image, right? If I click on it, ah, it's a hyperlinked image to the first page of the book. So you can see how that works. Anyway, um, what I'd like you to do is uh, try get your own account and try making your own books and see what kind of creative ideas you can put together. Uh, and then go to Nadma, the Nadma community uh, Facebook page and share your thoughts. Uh, join, join in the conversation. Thank you very much.